What if Hinata was born in Uchiha and Sasuke was born in Hyuga? Chapter 23, The Fourth Shinobi World War, Part 1, Five Weeks Later. The war is now started. Everybody from different villages have gathered, they all cooperate to each other to help with one another. They now announce they must protect their villages at all cost, and protecting their two remaining tailed beasts, defend their loved ones, if anyone dies. They will die with honor, and proud to protecting their respectful villages and serve justice. The Allied Shinobi forces, or A, S, F, are now formed, and ready to fight to defend against the upcoming threat. Sasuke and Sakura have now been joined the battle. Sasuke tells Sakura that once the war ended, both would promise each to get married soon, Sakura nod, and understanding. Obito and Kabuto commanded all the Zetsus and Edo Tensei to charge and attack. The A, S, F, Allied Shinobi forces, now sprinted into battle. Everyone clashed, most of the fight plays out the same as the original. Elsewhere at Turtle Island, they all spending there in the island, training, meditating, and relaxing for quite some time now. B and Naruto even bonded each other to practicing some rhythm and other boys stuff, like Naruto used to hanging out with Sasuke, Shikamaru, Joji and Kiba around the times, as brothers. Hanata was a bit annoyed but she felt like she misses out, and reminded herself of them, when they were younger like their siblings again. She smiles and flashes back the time Sasuke and Naruto, tried to pull a prank on Hanata before their training started, then their prank have started to pull and she feel humiliated, and got owned, and they both laughing at the back, that made Hanata angry, she then activates her Sharingan, in a pit of rage, Naruto and Sasuke are scared of her, then both run and Hanata sprint faster, Naruto and Sasuke running far longer. She then catches them off guard, then Hanata knocks Sasuke and Naruto out, by beating them up, in the head with a knuckle sandwich over a prank, Naruto and Sasuke kneel down and apologized, Naruto deserved getting beat up for pulling such stunt and prank her to make her angry, then Hanata smiles smirkingly that it was very fun, she still loved them very much, Hanata thought about Sasuke being the goofy older brother that he is very pacifistic and kind Hyuga, despite being looking like he is way older, it turns out Sasuke is the youngest of the two, but way taller than Naruto, back to the present day, she feels like she was happy to be on a team again, and remembering those good old times back then, how much she misses her friends, how much she misses Naruto, how much she've been through a lot, she how much she have been blinded and focus on her revenge over the death of her clan and blindedly wanted Itachi dead, how much she had been training to kill Itachi for nothing and realized she had been blinded, deep down, how much she misses Naruto, Sasuke and Kakashi and all others in the Leaf Village, feels like family to them, Hanata felt like a sister to both Naruto and Sasuke, who acted like bunch of knuckleheads. She laughed a bit but she just covered her up and shook her head. Then Hanata and Naruto are training each other to awaken their special jutsu to surpass and master their own skills, they fight, to gain enough strength to fight in the war, saving their friends, just to leveling their power, and even practicing their own respective sage transformations. They then meditating, and trying to contact the deep inner thoughts, and dark side of their selves, Naruto talk and negotiates his bad side and trying to reconcile to learn and awaken his nine tails chakra mode. As for Hanata, she trying to contact it not her inner thoughts but Fugaku, and Mikoto Uchiha, her father and mother. Hanata was happy to see them, and hugged them, Hanata cried out to see them again. Hanata gladly took time to learn how to contact it any spirit within her mind. Learn how to control, and face her fear to find loved and respected, and not become a bitter, dysfunctional and an awful person she is. She then talked to her father about why he trying to start a coup d'etat, to causing an uprising against the leaf, just to cause another war. Fugaku tries to hide it but he could not bear it to hide it anymore, he finally breaks his silence, and admitted that everything he did is for the sake of protecting the clan, and they were the founders of the village, Fugaku cried out that it's all his fault for regretfully ruining the leaf by caused an uprising, but it's not their fault why the Uchiha starts an uprising, Danzo Shimura falsely accusing the Uchiha over an Uchiha member using Genjutsu and unleashes the Nine Tails, then Danzo and other council putting the blame for the attack, the Uchiha did nothing wrong, they were trying to fight, and helping others to join the battle because, someone from the Uchiha clan causes the Nine Tails attack in the leaf, Danzo would not buy it, then Danzo demanded to transfer the Uchiha to the outskirts of the mainland of the leaf, far away from the edge of the land of fire until the Uchiha would be forgotten and rotten, then the Uchiha starts a coup d'etat against the leaf and its leaderships, Fugaku told Hanata that it's not their intent to cause an uprising, Danzo was the one who put the blame on the Uchiha and he did in fact pull the stunt to cause genocide, and he was the one who commanded his Anbu route to kill the Uchiha, 
Danzo was also the reason for stealing Shisui's Koto Amatsu Kami, so that they must stop causing an uprising. Fugaku told Hanata everything what he has done and it's not really his fault. Hanata already knew about what had happened, she did discover the truth and told Tsunade, the fifth Hokage about Danzo's doing to the Uchiha clan. Hanata have finally told the truth to the leaf that it was all Danzo's fault for doing all the dirty work he did to the Uchiha massacre and blackmailing Atachi to taking orders from Danzo's dirty work. Hanata is still upset and mad at his father that she wanted blame his father, because Fugaku was not a kind person to be a father to her. Fugaku never focus or have any respect to Hanata as a daughter. Fugaku only focuses on Atachi and taking his attention to him. Fugaku knew this day would come. Fugaku wanted to keep his secret from her. Fugaku begged for her forgiveness for lying his own daughter for years, and why Fugaku wanted Atachi to kill himself and Mikoto, their mother, about the coup d'etat. Atachi wanted Hanata to be safe, and Fugaku, their father, wanted Hanata to make her, hating her own father for what he had done, and not Atachi. Hanata had a good heart, and a loving kid. Hanata wanted to blame, and hate her father for lying to her and never loved and respected her as a father to his own daughter and never pay attention to her, but she realized, she never wanted this. Hanata would forgive her father, but she wanted to hate him for not appreciate her, to be her father, and for not giving her the chance to make things right and have the love and attention she deserves that Fugaku ignoring her as a kid, Fugaku never pay close attention to Hanata's training and her skills she did, so that Fugaku would be proud of his daughter, Atachi had appreciated his sister's skills on her entire life, Atachi treated Hanata like, not as a brother nor a father that Hanata always wanted, but as a friend. Hanata loved Atachi until she was blindedly hated him but loved him so much. Hanata wanted to hate her father for not giving him some approval that she wanted to be proud of. She wanted to blame her father, for not loving her as a daughter. She is about to lash out, letting her tears come out to let the pain go away. Mikoto holds her shoulder, to calm down. Hanata would cry and she then changed with a smile of joy. Fugaku apologizes Hanata for not being there for his daughter. Fugaku think back, that if only he could go back, he could have not start the coup d'etat in the first place nor he wanted to help the leaf since they are the founders who founded the village, he wanted to stop the person who is causing the nine tails all those years ago, Fugaku shed and burst into tears, so is Mikoto. He knew that he is not a proud dad for her, they then both hugged, then Hanata is happy to see her parents again, she is proud of who she is. Her parents is proud of her daughter to be alive, Fugaku even mentions Naruto if he is Hanata's friend. Hanata tells her father, Fugaku, that Naruto is not just a friend, he is Hanata's boyfriend, Fugaku was surprised to see his daughter have found someone. She is happy with, and reconciled her father for what he had done, for causing an uprising, then Fugaku, and Mikoto are about to fade it away, but before leaving, Hanata told them to what happened to Atachi. If he was not with them in her inner thoughts, where was he? Fugaku said Atachi was revived as an Edo Tensei, and he is on a battlefield, joining forces with Obito and Kabuto. Fugaku told her to talk to him, and save him, so, they go up above the afterlife, she sees her parents disappeared, then she awakened her new snake sage transformation mode, she now has access to having snake sage chakra mode. Naruto, and Hanata have now awakened from their meditation, and unlocked their new powers, Killer B was waiting for them. Suddenly the same Hada was moving and what it appeared to be Kisum Hoshigaki was reborn and took a few pieces of tailed beast's chakra and he fled, on the way to delivered chakra, so Obito could now awaken the ten tailed beast. They must head to the battlefield and stop them from ever reaching to awaken the ten tails. Hanata, Naruto, Killer B beg Yamato, Guy, and other squads to head to the battlefield. They agree, then Hanata tells to take care of Hanabi safe. Hanata tells Hanabi to stay on the island, Hanabi nod and understanding, Hanabi hug Hanata and she tells Hanata to be careful. Hanata then kiss Hanabi on the forehead. Then they went off, heading to the battlefield. Elsewhere Sakura and Akamaru are running around to the battlefield to help everyone for their help, Choji also joins Sakura's aid. Just then, they encountered their old teammates and friends. Shino, and Kiba, who are now Edo Tensei, Sakura, Akamaru, and Choji are shocked to see them again after three years. Sakura and Akamaru feared to see Kiba, Kiba then tries to strike against them, Sakura tries to negotiate with him and discuss of what had happened. Kiba have sacrificed himself to save Akamaru, Akamaru had a severe condition, he always look o you wife for each other and take good care of him every day. Kiba always gave him food and medication if Akamaru had a serious mental health, Sakura told Kiba that she take good care of Akamaru. She always take good care of him. Sakura told him that Akamaru does not want to live with Hana, and Sume, Akamaru made his decision that he can live and take care by Sakura. Sakura have always take good care of Akamaru for as long as she likes. 
Sakura told both Kiba and Shino that she promised she will become strong and look take care of Akamaru no matter the cause, Kiba was shocked what he had heard from Sakura, Sakura had been on Team Kur and I for quite some time ever since Kiba and Shino died at the Hanata retrieval mission, Kiba failed to defend himself, instead he tries to save Akamaru to keep him alive, he is proud of Sakura for take good care of Akamaru. Akamaru was happy to see his former owner and best friend, Kiba. Akamaru comforting him, cuddle him then eventually, Kiba is about to fade away and said goodbye to both Sakura and Akamaru. Kiba calls out Shino. Meanwhile Choji and Shino fight. Shino asks why did Choji chose to switch that day where they both fighting against the sound for to rescuing Hanata. Choji did not mean to, it was a mistake, he regretted for the switching their opponents and trying to fight against two opposite members of the sound for. Choji did not think through since he tried his best to figure out the plan three years ago, Choji tried to apologize but Shino is still would not buy it. Choji tried to forgive him, Shino still continue infest him with bugs. Suddenly Shino's father came to the rescue. Shino's father, Shibi, came to convince his son to listen to what Choji said. Choji tried his best to save him, even their plan went horribly wrong, Shibi said that Choji was trying forgiven him, he did not mean to let Shino died over a switching opponents. The three were continued talk no jutsu, until Shino realized the error of his ways, realizing that Choji was only trying to help, and he tried to figure it out the plan he did, since Choji was not the brain of the group. He is just a gentle giant who likes to make friends and sometimes he makes mistakes, Shibi said to his son, Shino that everybody needs a second chance. So, Shino understood, and he forgives Choji, then Kiba heard his voice that it's time to go up to the afterlife, Kiba made a smile, looking down at them and Akamaru looks up at him in tears, seeing his former master, best friend and partner, now floating up, then Akamaru howls, Kiba is putting himself to rest, and be with his other relatives, Sakura pats Akamaru making sure Kiba is okay up there, Akamaru nod. Shino now faded away, and looks at Choji and his father, Shibi. He then takes his black glasses off, then makes a smile, and gives a thumbs up to both of them. Shino's father, Shibi crying to see his son again, one last time. They then continued on battling, and save a few other warriors. Sasuke fight off many Edo Tensei warriors, then he encountered his greatest fear. The Cloud Ambassador has revived, he was the one who tried to kidnap Sasuke as a three-year-old back then. He came for the heir of the Hyuga clan, which is Sasuke. The Cloud Ambassador came back for revenge, and he, not only he wanted Sasuke's Byakugan, but Hyashi Hyuga. The Ambassador wanted Hyashi dead, and then he would take his eyes, as well. Sasuke draw out his sword, and they prepared to fight. They have clash for over 40 to 50 minutes, then the ambassador stabbed through Sasuke in the shoulder, Sasuke then now been incapacitated. The ambassador was about to slash him down and cut off his head. Suddenly backup arrived, and saved Sasuke from being decapitated. A group of cloud ninjas sealed the Edo Tensei of the cloud ambassador, they kept sealing him up for quite some times, until the ambassador admitted the truth, that he was responsible for kidnapping Sasuke, all those years ago, and he had ruined and broken up the Hyuga affairs by tricking him, because he is the reason for trying to kidnapping Sasuke, and attempts to remove his Byakugan, to stealing their abilities to spread the Dojutsu to the Cloud Village. Cloud ninjas had shocked in disgust, what they hear from the ambassador's words, many Cloud ninjas are disappointed and they are no longer have any respect from him, his body faded away, his soul is now, not going to the afterlife but sealed him away as punishment for his crimes, the reaper appeared, the ambassador's soul is being dragged to the reaper's stomach, in frightening, the reaper tries to devour him, and eventually, he is now being sealed, he is going to be punished for what had done, the cloud ambassador is sealed up, and he can never get out. Sasuke was satisfied that he conquered his greatest fear, he then healed himself using the mystic palm jutsu, just then Kisum have delivered a few samples of two-tailed beast's chakra, and of course, Kabuto brought up one of Killer B's eight tails horn to revive the ten tails. It is already done. Obito appreciate Kissum for his loyalty, Kissum now left, and he then later, he take his own life by eating himself by a group sharks, so, no one would ever find him, meanwhile B, Hanata and Naruto arrive but sooner day stops them and tells them go back to the island but Naruto tells that Kissum took many of their chakra and he delivered it to Madara. They begged to let them pass. A denied to letting them to battlefield but soon it had no other choice but she told them that are they ready to join the battle. Naruto said he and Hanata have been training for the past few weeks. They have awakened their immensely chakra modes. Both Suna Day and A had no other choice but to let them pass and saved everyone from the war. Meanwhile Zetsu look at Obito is doing. Then Obito have summoned the Gedo statue to absorbing all nine beasts Zetsu smiled and he is excited about his plans. Once the ten tails revived and absorb it into Obito as its Jinchiriki, 
the infinite Tsukuyomi would be a success awaken and plans to get rid of all humanity around the world, including betraying Obito, and everyone will be live in a genjutsu world and live in a fantasy world until they die from dehydration, suffocation and hunger whenever a human is trapped in a cocoon, absorbing the chakra. They will make every living beings into white zetsus. Suddenly, Obito knew Zetsu's plan all along. He would plan to betray him. It was not Madara's will to begin with. It was all Kaguya's plan from the very beginning, all these years in his lifetime, Zetsu was just a living walking karma, that tries to manipulating and corrupting anyone for over decades in its lifetime. And sir, Obito instantly killed Black Zetsu with his fire jutsu, resulting Black Zetsu to be killed off, so that he won't be able to revive Kaguya to a new host body. Obito said to Zetsu, and you think I forget about you? Vestige of Madara's will. No, this plan is something I have worked towards I will not have Madara take credit will I have ruined my plans, Obito then turn around and proceed to awaken the Ten Tails. The Fourth Shinobi World War still continues the fight and defend across all villages. They have fought so hard. They could not handle the pain and suffering. They tried to seal up all Edo Tensei warriors. They fight off many white Zetsis and even Madara Uchiha himself. The members of the Rookie 9 Kanoa 12 are still fight off and defend their friends and loved ones. Some few squads have been injured others almost died. While many did not make it, they died in the line of duty or some have sacrificed themselves to protect their teammates or other teammates who are allies from other villages. Naruto, Hanata and B are heading to the battlefield to save the others. Naruto tells Hanata and B to split up. They've gone off to a separate places. Most of the scenes like the original main canon plays the same and Naruto tried to help out others, Naruto realized that most of the Edo Tensei are functionally immortal, the only way to defeat them is to help their soul to find peace, but if it doesn't if some Edo Tensei fallen warriors had no heart to find peace, they might as well just sealing them away if it does not work and if some refuses, they would seal them and punish them for their crimes. Elsewhere Hanata fighting against the Edo Tensei warrior and she sprinted somewhere at the forest. She was unprepared for what she have encountered. The Edo Tensei of Itachi arrived in front of her, but he is not alone, Nagato is with him. She then holds her sword and was about to draw out her sword. Hanata commented, brother, why? Atachi replied, I had no other choice, my dearest sister. Sorry it has to be this way. I know I will always love you still. And that any actions I take here against you, is not our volition, Nagato stood there and replied, it isn't my volition here either. Even if I had to I would still do it. I just wanted to make peace to the world. The war would still continue its cycle of hatred, once the Ten Tails is revived, everyone would die and this will be the last war, they then fight off. Launch their attack at Hanata. Hanata uses her Snake Sage Chakra mode to boost her power and defend herself. Atachi uses Amaterasu but Hanata dodges and instead fires at Nagato's arm. Nagato uses Asura Path to make his arm look robotic, and fires with Chakra missiles, Hanata then uses Fire Style Phoenix Flower to fire each every missiles to deflect its attack. Atachi then was about to slash her with his own sword but Hanata deflects it with her sword. They both clash. Hanata's snake sage chakra wears off. She then uses lightning chakra to boost her sword. Then Atachi uses his Suzanu while Nagato using animal path to summon Cerberus and a crab. By then, Atachi uses Amaterasu again but Hanata uses Kagatsuki manages to negate the black flames comes at her. Nagato's crab vice gripped Hanata to hold her, then Atachi tries to end her with his Suzanu blade, just then Hanata's Suzanu appeared to guard and free from Nagato's crab's grasp. Hanata's Suzanu is much more stronger than her brother's own Suzanu with all the weapons he had, Hanata had very little chance against them. Nonetheless she fought, manages to slam Nagato's Cerberus, she then clashes with Atachi's, Hanata waited for a second and charges her Chidori she would suddenly shoot from her Suzanu like missiles just like Nagato's chakra missiles into the air at Atachi's head and would grab her brother. The two falls out of the Suzanu and hit the ground and roll, it was then Nagato uses the Naraka path to summon the King of Hell, stood up as Atachi and Hanata rolled, Atachi begs her forgiveness for his actions and lied to her and made her to hate him just to revenge the clan and wanted her to be the hero she wanted to revenge her clan and made her miserable for all her life. Hanata hugged Atachi, and she then kissed him on the cheek like a sweet sibling they used to be back when they were kids. Just then Naruto arrived and saw Hanata fighting with Atachi and Nagato. Hanata told Atachi that she was never alone, she possesses the eternal Mangekyo, the gift Atachi given to her, she told him that she felt Atachi with her since the day he left. Atachi then apologized for having not been there to protect her, Hanata even told that her Suzanu she has, was the reason, she can use it without drawbacks, all because of Atachi, he was still protecting her, it will never change, 
Just then Nagato and the King of Hell is coming for her, he is about to latch her and force pulls out her tongue out and feed it to the King of Hell as punishment. Just then Hanata disappear, turn out to be a shadow clone and Hanata comes out from the ground and stab Nagato with her Chidori blade through the back and clean through the gut. Resulting the King of Hell disappeared, Nagato gets up and still alive somehow but Itachi then told Nagato to stop and he meant to cease the fight. Itachi told Nagato that it's not worth it, Itachi told Nagato that they must go. Just then Naruto arrived to save Hanata and Naruto seeing both Itachi and Nagato again, Nagato remembers what Naruto had said earlier before his death, and what Jiraiya had said. About peace. Nagato realizes it and remembers it all. They then about to glow and began to fade it away, they floating high above as they both ascend from the ground and heading to go up to the afterlife. Hanata looked back at this but could not say anything about it, he rose up through the air to Nagato and tells him that they must go and let go his anger. Nagato nod, and agree, then changes his anger expression to a smile and sorrowful happiness. But before going up, Itachi tells Naruto to take good care of his sister. Then Itachi hold both Naruto and Hanata's hand and hold it in place. Then Itachi tells Naruto that he really do care and Itachi knew that Naruto truly loved Hanata. Naruto promised that he would take good care of Hanata no matter what the cost. Itachi nod and respect Naruto with an approval. Together they went up above, ascended to the afterlife in pieces cry out in tears of joy. She is happy to see her brother again, one last time. Naruto hold her and comforting her. Hanata then wiped her tears out, and so they continue where they left off, and finished what they are starting, no time to recover. The war raged on and keep it going. The A, S, F, now with Naruto, Killer B, and Hanata on their side, pushed on until they reached of the Ten Tails. The Ghetto statue has now finished absorbing all tailed beasts and the Ten Tails revived. There stood Madara and Obito up above the head of the Ten Tails, started to moving. Madara commented, Behold, your ultimate defeat. Stay tuned for more what-if stories.